people not wanting it. There will be, um, you know, debate, partisanship, etc. So we've got to figure out a way to get the population to want to, to ask for, to support policies that reduce emissions. Secondly, we've got to figure out a way to influence policies. One of the promising hopes right now is that uh, Climate Interactive has been very, very successful getting lots of interest among folks going to the Copenhagen negotiations, which are going to be in December. The agreements that come out of there could be supported by sea road simulations. As you can see, the simulation models that we've been running now, which, by the way, the underlying models have been verified by a team of highly respected scientists from around the world, allow you to simulate policies, to simulate scenarios that often take you know, hours or days on supercomputers. You can actually simulate them in seconds, real time, during negotiations. So one of our hopes is to get sea roads into the Copenhagen negotiations. Anything you can do to, to help in that uh, area would be appreciated. So Embeddable Sims is one resource you can use. And again, I just showed the first sim, which communicates these four messages. It's very simple. There's another sim, which I'm now going to go into, which shows the potential of the sea roads, which um, allows you to, to test more sophisticated proposals than the four canned ones that uh, we just did. So I'm going I'm to go back into the um, web page here where we've embedded the CO2 dynamic indicator. I'm now going to dive deeper into this by going into the emissions dynamic indicator. So we're going to load up another sim here, emissions dynamic indicator. And uh, this one, again, as I said, is a little bit more sophisticated. And uh, I'm going to walk through it a little bit. So again, you, if you want to use this and share this with folks, you'll be able to, uh, in better position, to, to, uh, to explain how to use it. So the concerns, again, has a fairly similar chart as the previous one um, in terms of projections around CO2 um, emissions, CO2 in the atmosphere, um, and sea level rise. Um, if we look a little bit at causes, and this is going to be helpful to you for this uh, proposals we're going to walk through in a minute, um, I'm going to use a, a talk that was done by Drew Jones of Climate Interactive to lay out three different nation types, three different country types, and how each of them is contributing to um, CO2 emissions in a different way. So here's developing A countries. And these are folks like China, India, Brazil, South of Africa, et cetera, et cetera, where there's still a lot of poverty, but their um, emissions is growing quickly. For example, China has a new coal uh, power plant being built every week. Um, it's almost like the equivalent of the uh, United Kingdom's electric grid being added you know, every week or so. So their emissions, although lower than uh, the developed worlds now, are expected to be uh, rapidly accelerating over the next 90 years. Okay, developing B countries. Again, you can click on this and get more information. But these are the um, the most impoverished countries in the world. They're the South Africa's, um, or not the South Africa's. They're the African nations um, like Bangladesh, other nations which are very, very poor. Their emissions are low and are projected to stay low. However, many of these countries are the ones that are going to be most impacted by climate change. So on the one hand, they're contributing the least to it. And on the other hand, they're most likely to be the most impacted by it. All right, finally, here's the developed countries. In developed countries, currently higher emissions than either of the developing A's or B's eventually will rise, but less than the, uh, the developing A's, um, but we'll still have a a continued uh, you know, emissions impact on the world. These are the United States, the Europe's, um, Japan's, others that are more of the, uh, the developed nations. So in summary, 74% of all current fossil fuel CO2 in the atmosphere has come from the developed world. Um, so you know, those of us in the developed world, we take a huge part in terms of what's in the bathtub. We own almost 75% of what's in the bathtub in the, in the uh, atmosphere now. On the other hand, in the next few years, the, uh, the rapidly developing countries will generate more than any other group. And again, the uh, developing B are going to be impacted the most, although contributing the least. 
and currently CO2 parts per million is expected to reach um, somewhere around 900, 950 by 2100, which could be catastrophic. So let's look at how we can test a few policies. So we've set up a simulation, again, that you can share where people can try the different proposals that are on the table. We've uh, in included in there what these proposals are. So you can look at what the current proposals are, again, the 80% below 1990, um, the 70% below 2006 for Canada, um, other types of policies. And on this chart, you can make a proposal, make a prediction. You can look at different um, variables like emissions per capita in greater detail. And down here is where you can actually set these proposals. So anywhere you see a question mark on here, you can use, uh, you can click on it and get more information. So for example, how might we set a future cap? So here's how you would set a future cap. If you want uh, to cap emissions for, let's say, the developed nations at 2025, you would type in down here, developed nations, 2025, hit the tab key, We'll leave it at zero change percent. In other words, we're not going to change it above or below that 2025 level. We'll say we're going to reach that in 2025, so that's the year that it's going to start. And we're going to also have the start year be 2025. All right, so I'll hit all those and enter them. And then if you simulate, You can see that the developed nations, which is the blue line, rises to 2025 and then levels off. Now, we could have made a prediction. I didn't make a prediction on here, um, but you can make a prediction. The predictions look like the previous ones. You can also make predictions around temperature. Let's see about emissions. Okay, emissions for the different regions are here, and um, you can see um, stacked. A stacked chart here shows that the developed nations contribute up to this much of the global emissions. The developing A nations contribute what's between the red and the blue line, and then the green is what's added by the developing B nations. So um, the stacked graph on this chart is a, a nice way to show how uh, different regions are, are contributing. And then the bar chart shows in percentages that uh, you know, by the end of it, developing A, given this proposal, would be contributing 60% of all um, emissions. All right, um, you can compare the current policy to business as usual for um, CO2. Here's the difference in, in parts per million. You can look at temperature and sea level, and this pink line is what the, uh, the target uh, or what you're estimating it, remember those sliders back there would be, and you can look at the per capita. All right, so this particular simulation, um, again, is useful for sharing and looking at um, different policy choices. So again, what would we do if we wanted to uh, put in the policy of the United States and Europe's, let's say we're gonna pick 1990, we're going to make that less than 80% of what 1990 values were. We're going to reach that by 2050, and we're going to start going for that in 2010. And we can also do the same thing. We can put that policy choice in for the developing region A. So we'll have them hit their two 1990 levels, 2050, and start in 2010. And we can leave um, developing bees alone, maybe, and see what, what that does. So again, here's how you would put in different proposals on the table, simulate them out. Okay, and uh, now you can see the black line here is much lower than what it originally was and is actually nearing um, 400 parts per million. Okay, so this embeddable sim um, should be useful, um, to, again, to communicate to more sophisticated audiences how um, you might um, apply different policies, different proposals that are on the table in a more sophisticated way to seeing the impacts, the implications of, uh, of the different policies that are out there. Now, you'll note that there's this little embed link and share option down here. If you click on that, 
This is where uh, you can actually highlight and select the, uh, the embed text, or you can link to a URL, or you can share it. And I'll show you in a minute how 